All right, great. Are you seeing a you seeing a slide that says welcome? No. Not yet. Okay, let me share my screen. Thanks for the check. Okay, now. Gotcha. Yes. Now we yeah. got it. All right, thank you very much. Well, welcome everybody to the seventh annual Community College Cyber Summit, albeit a much modified version from previous summits. Before we get into the the meat of the event, I want to say a few things about the virtual platform and, and, this, and this virtual summit. So we've limited the Zoom group chat to sending messages to the host only, which is me. And so any questions, comments, feel free to send my way and we'll, we'll stay on top of that as best we can. I've got a number of co-hosts that, that will be helping out trying to manage uh, the various participants along, along with myself. We have 463 folks that register. It looks like we've got about 100, well, we have 150 now, 160 in the, in the meeting. And you're on your own for managing your audio. Uh, we'll, we'll mute folks centrally if, if participants can't seem to manage audio on their own. We'll be recording each of these presentations, which will include the slide decks. So stay tuned for links to them after the event. And we'll, we'll send that through the same system we used for registration. So without further ado, the Community College Cyber Summit is the first and only national conference to focus on the role of community colleges in cybersecurity education and workforce development. The National Cyber Watch Center, of which I'm the executive director and principal investigator, organized the first event in the summer of 2014, along with our partners and co-producers, the Center for System Security and Information Assurance at Moraine Valley Community College and what was then called Cyber Watch West, now the national, <clears throat> excuse me, the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center at um, Whatcom Community College. And the, the first summit in 2014 was hosted by the Center for System Security and Information Assurance in July, third week of July in 2014. 2015 was hosted by the College of Southern Nevada, and that took place the third week of June of that year. 2016 was hosted by the Community College of Allegheny County in Pittsburgh, and that took place the third week of July of that year. 2017 was hosted by Prince George's Community College, which is home to the National Cyber Watch Center, and that was in Largo, Maryland, next to DC, the last week of June of that year. 2018 was hosted by Mount Hood Community College in Gresham, Oregon, August 2nd through 4th in 2018. And then last year, of course, was hosted by Bossier Parish Community College in Shreveport, Louisiana, the last week slash first week of, last week of July, first week of August. I wanna thank our sponsors, uh, Jones and Bartlett Learning. They've been a longtime partner of the National Cyber Watch Center and the Community College Cyber Summit. Had we been in person in Dayton, Ohio at Sinclair Community College, you would have seen them in the vendor area um, selling books and access to their, to, their, to their lab solutions. So thanks to Jones and Bartlett Learning for their ongoing support. And I also wanna say a special thanks to the uh, National Science Foundation, specifically Celeste Carter, Corby Hovis and Victor Petrowski from the Advanced Technological Education Program, who for years have supported not only the National Cyber Watch Center, but our partner centers, the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center and the Center for System Security and Information Assurance in Marine Valley. Um, and they funded a number of others, Bob mentioned cybersecurity focused centers and projects. And without their support, um, not only would you not have the, the three main centers doing an update and bringing the community together tonight, but you, you, you certainly wouldn't have this event. So um, I'd like to uh, please join me in a round of virtual applause for our sponsor, Jones and Bartlett Learning and the National Science Foundation for their continued support of cybersecurity education at, at community colleges nationally. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the highlights from last year, because I, I, I think there's some interesting things that perhaps you were aware of at the event, but weren't aware of perhaps in sort of the overall picture. And then we'll, we'll jump into the, this portion, which will focus on um, 
on, on recognizing the winners of the innovations, the 2020 innovations in cybersecurity education program. So as I mentioned, last year's summit took place in Shreveport, Bossier City, whose slogan is see it, bet it, taste it. And those that attended may remember that the Louisiana governor, John Bell Edwards, kicked off the summit. And his timing was very auspicious because he had issued a state of emergency a few days before the opening plenary to free up money to deal with ransomware attacks in three parishes in the state. And at that point, I think schools were going to be opening in Louisiana in, in a week or so following last year's summit. We, of course, recognized the 2019 Innovations in Cybersecurity Education winners and released, the, excuse me, the Innovations Booklet. We had a New Orleans street party with incredible food and Southern hospitality and an incredible team across many organizations that, that helped pull this event off. Of course, our incredible host, Bossier Parish Community College, um, who are certainly going to be a tough act to follow. We ran our first ever cybersecurity skills development workshops, which were all at maxim maximum capacity. You can see the, the four here and set the stage for what will become future summit hands-on workshops. We did a digital badging pilot with our partners from San Diego, Syned, and we wanted to explore the what, why, and benefits of digital badges. The what, including that these can be an indicator of achievement, they're portable, they help tell a story. Why? Well, because they're data rich and validated. Um, you can, for example, see um, you know, the metadata included in a badge, say on somebody's LinkedIn profile. They help reward and motivate participants and they can replace paper certificates. The benefits are that they provide attendees verification of conference attendance or perhaps continuing professional education credits for things like professional certificate to, to, to remain in good standing with professional certifications. And they, and they promote engagement. And you see here a sample of the badges. The one in the upper left was a badge that those that completed various tasks of um, one of the cybersecurity skills development workshops and moving to the right badges for presenters, volunteers, and attendees. Um, and you might not be able to see this. The takeaway here though is notice there were 233 badges issued and there were 141 badges accepted. So this is a report from our partners at Syned, and this was run from August 18th through September 1st of last year. The, 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 the piece here you wanna focus on is the acceptance rate, the 60.5%, which is extremely high. The average for the accept, average acceptance rate for digital badges in, in, in the tech sector is around 20 to 30%. So really good engagement with the digital badging. And we, we look to bring this back in 2021. We had a record level number of sponsors, 32. Um, and so as I mentioned, the National Science Foundation provided seed funding for this event. And, and this year, had we run the face-to-face -face event would have been the first year, so our seventh year of running the summits where the event would pay for itself um, with, with zero funding from the National Science Foundation, which is exactly the sorts of things that the sort of things that the National Science Foundation wants to see with their investments, right? They want to see these programs go on and be able to maintain themselves. And we're able to do that through um, a, a very, I think, agreeable um, fee structure for participants and very competitive pricing for sponsors. And, you know, most of those 32 sponsors have been with us um, from the very beginning. So that's 2019. Now to fast forward to 2020. So this was going to be this year's theme, right? Applying the NICE framework, then that is the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education Framework to Emerging Cyber Technologies. If you're not familiar with the NICE framework, it was published as National Institute for Standards and Technology Special Publication 800-181. And if you're not familiar with the the, the special publication 800 series that NIST produces. Um, you'll want to take a look. There's a ton of great resources available, everything from 
um, policies to cryptographic standards, you name it. And so this is part of that special publication 800 series. And, and this, was, this was published in August 2017. The NICE framework is a national focused resource that categorizes and describes cybersecurity work. The NICE framework establishes a taxonomy and common lexicon that describes cybersecurity work and workers irrespective of where or for whom the work is performed. The NICE framework is intended to be applied in the public, private, and academic sectors. And I thought I would give just a, a, a really simple example of how while not applying the NICE framework to cyber technologies, rather, but to curriculum. Um, and there, there is a lot of confusion in our space around the difference between the NICE framework and, for example, the centers that the National Security Agency Centers of Academic Excellence Knowledge Units, which you can think of really as those knowledge units as, as the the pieces that that collectively form a common body of knowledge for the information security discipline and the the center of academic excellence designation is in fact that it's a designation for institutions where the institution has to demonstrate amongst other things excellence in areas like curriculum and whatnot but it's much different than the nice framework and here, here's a simple example of how you, how you could apply the NICE framework to um, and, and map job titles to curriculum. So we're going to look at, um, so what I'm showing here is a range of job titles, right? You see computer network defense analyst, you go down, there's analyst, analyst, mainly of the defense variety. There's any number of digital forensics job titles. There is some intrusion detection system technician stuff listed and then ending with vulnerability assessment analysts. All right, so these are a range of job titles related to the functional job role information security analyst. Functional job roles are broad classifications that include a range of job titles and tasks folks need to do as part of that job. These tasks can be mapped to concepts that align to many of the technical courses we are teaching at our institutions and have been for a number of years. And what you see here is a sample of those courses. The NCC refers to National Cyber Watch Center. If you're not familiar, one of the things we do as a center is we, we put together reference curriculum documents that include ways to package degree and certificate for both credit and non-credit programs, how you would offer those, for example, in a two-year program as both an AAS or AS degree program, and then the technical courses that would comprise those degree and certificate programs. And here are a number of two, four, six, eight courses from our catalog, which has 34 courses, common course outlines, learning objectives, in some cases, instructional content, right? And what, and what you can see here is that, you know, by definition, the technical courses we are teaching help prepare students for these job roles that I, that I previously described, right? Assume, assuming students are mastering the concepts related to the various tasks. And if you want to see more on how curricula has been mapped to the NICE framework, I'm going to, when I'm done doing my little spiel here, I'll post a URL in the Zoom group chat to a publication where we mapped five of our courses to various national workforce competency requirements, including the NICE framework. So I just want to give you a, a sort of short preview of how perhaps folks can use the framework in this case to align it with curriculum. And speaking of NICE, um, and the NICE framework, we have partnered with the NICE program office to bring you a special issue of our cybersecurity skills journal. If you're not familiar with the cybersecurity skills journal, it was launched in 2018 as the world's first double blind peer reviewed journal dedicated to the scholarly analysis of cybersecurity education and professional practice. And you notice it's, it's Cybersecurity Skills Journal Practice and Research is the official title of the journal, practice being the operative word, um, practice coming before research. 
And there are some things that make the Cybersecurity Skills Journal different from other journals. One is that the focus is on practice first and that research informs that practice. Second, the journal focuses on skills. As far as we know, this is the only journal in the world that focuses on skills. Third, it's of a hybrid nature. So that means that there's free access to the articles and then royalty opportunities for authors to distribute digital assets related to their publication or publications. And, and last but not least, one of the real differentiators of this journal is the development nature of the journal itself, meaning that we convene 10 person review panels and the cybersecurity skills journal editorial board members are available along with volunteers from the community to assist authors in moving their ideas from conception presentation or implementation into a manuscript that can inform and improve cybersecurity skill development. And I wanna, wanna let you know that there is a special issue of the NICE framework that will be coming out. And you can see the, the purpose there. I'm not gonna go through that. I will say though that draft manuscripts uh, are being accepted for review until September 15th. Uh, and we are announcing two future special issues of the Cybersecurity Skills Journal. Um, one is diversifying the cybersecurity workforce, and you can see the purpose there, but it's essentially looking at ways in which we can enhance the cybersecurity capability, maturity of women and other underrepresented populations. And, and one thing you're gonna see in the, the innovations winning submissions is, is a range of, of diverse submissions from diverse folks. Um, diversity represented as you know age, gender, ethnicity, um, et cetera. And so you can see the planned publication first abstract submission and call for abstract dates here. And then the second future special issue of the Cybersecurity Skills Journal is on the impact of federally funded cybersecurity programs. And we want to look at the impact that various federally funded initiatives like the National Cyber Watch Centers, for example, have had on and can play in designing and enhancing capability maturity um, focus programs for entering and existing IT and cybersecurity workers. And oops, I'm sorry. Again, you can see the plan publication first abstract submission and call for abstract dates there. And the URL csj.nationalcyberwatch.org. So go there for more information on the call for papers or abstracts, as well as further information on the various sorts of services that the journal can provide prospective authors. And I want to I want to make a specific shout out to all of you who have either present it in the past or in the future want to present, we, we strongly encourage you to submit your ideas and experiences you have, um, right? The whole developmental is one of the operative words with this journal, right? And there's a, there's a strong community that's looking to help develop really good ideas into publishable papers. So please take advantage of, of the various opportunities to do so. Okay. That's enough on the 2019 Community College Cyber Summit and the this year's theme and how you would apply that theme. And then a, a quick shout out to the special issue on the NICE framework through the Cybersecurity Skills Journal. And really the main portion of what I'm um, supposed to be talking about, and that's our Innovations in Cybersecurity Education Program. This is a part of our awards and recognition program. It's now in its fourth year and we, we created this program on the premise that, um, that, that National Cyber Watch Center members are some of the best cybersecurity education innovators and that through National Cyber Watch innovators, uh, I think it's Deanne is, um, we're gonna have to mute her. Um, And one of my co-hosts, um, yeah, right thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, 
it's interesting to sort of get a sense, right? Virtually where people are, it sounds like that person was driving. Sometimes somebody's doing dishes, flushing a toilet, right? So these virtual events can be very <laughs> telling to say the least. Uh, but I digress, right? So we created this program because we wanted to, we realized that our members were some of the best cybersecurity educational innovators and that through our center, we wanted to share these innovations and we also wanted to accelerate their adoption throughout the community and let folks receive proper, or, or, or I should say provide proper recognition for the, the various um, institutions and faculty work. So um, the goals are many, but one is we don't wanna recreate the proverbial wheel, right? Um, we wanna provide a platform to recognize the innovative ways in which folks are doing what they're doing, provide a pathway for folks to submit to our cybersecurity skills journal, be able to disseminate these innovations through not only our publication that we produce every year, but through targeted emails, uh, wraparound social media, this event. Um, and we wanna provide you all with the growing inventory of programs and educators from which to find and emulate good ideas. You can see here the list of judges that reviewed the submissions. We had 53 in total of which 40 were selected for inclusion in the publication. And then we selected four winners across four different categories, evidence-based strategies, practice instruction, and program development. And this year we selected three honorable mention winning submissions. Uh, these folks here that were part of the, 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 the innovations panel are a combination of former innovations winners. So Dave Zychek from California State University, Chico, uh, Vitaly Ford, for example, and, and leaders in cybersecurity education, awareness and research. So I'd like to recognize and thank our judges. This is the publication. Uh, again, when I, after I'm done going through my spiel here, I'll post a number of links and I'll post a link to this, to this publication as well. Um, and it has all the 40 submissions with an abstract on what makes it innovative, um, divided into the four categories, evidence-based instruction, practice, and program development with contact information. If you wanna reach out to the person who led that, that submission and uh, get more information or see how you might be able to include that in your, in your courses or in your awareness programs or in your outreach or in your after-school programs, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right, so without further ado, we'll be honoring a, people from 11 institutions in four categories with three honorable mentions. So the winning submission in the evidence-based strategies category is called a cybersecurity strategy for at-risk youth submitted by Ben Izadi, Cypress College. And by the way, this is the second year in a row that Ben has won in this category. In 2019, he received the Innovations Award for his submission, Pathway to Advancement in Cybersecurity Education. And the mission of this project is to intervene in and reclaim the lives of at-risk youth. I'm going through the list again. Producing program graduates with the values, life skills, education, and self-disciplinary necessary, self-discipline necessary to succeed as productive citizens. Um, and they have a number of goals for this effort and a number of activities that made this program successful. And one was their close collaboration between the Cypress College and Sunburst Academy, the National Guard Youth Program. Um, they provided additional resources to the participants to ensure success like tutoring, counseling, workshops, guest speakers, field trips. Um, they help students prepare for professional certifications. Here's a picture. Uh, in addition of Ben, the team includes Henry Hua, Dean at Cypress College of the CIS Business Division, Rochelle Sanza, Chief Warrant Officer at Sunburst Academy, Russ Alazadeh, Professor, CIS, Cypress College, Stephanie Tier, Director, Dual Enrollment Program, Cypress College, and Stephanie Flores, Special Projects Manager at Cypress College. And Ben was um, very clear that I, that I make sure we, uh, we recognize the, the entire team. And then just one last, one last picture of their project. So Please join me in a round of virtual applause for Ben and his team on their winning submission in the evidence-based category. 
All right. In the instruction category, the winning submission submitted by Karen Ribble, Augusta University, is titled Girl Scouts Learn What It Takes for an Incident Response Team. The Girl Scouts Cyber Challenge is Girl Scouts of the USA's first ever national STEM challenge event sponsored by Raytheon Technologies. On October 19th, 2019, thousands of girls across 10 US cities solved a hypothetical ransomware attack on a moon base cultivating key cybersecurity skills with support from Raytheon Technologies volunteers and mentors. Girl Scouts of Historic Georgia was one of 10 councils selected to pilot the Cyber Challenge event, thanks in part through generous support from Raytheon Technologies. Details and materials were developed months before the event by Girl Scouts of the USA and cyber.org. And you can see the names of some of the other collaboratives there, uh, collaborators, I'm sorry, there on that slide. And we've got some great pictures of the girls in action here. Uh, it's hard, it looks like she's taken some notes on the left there and I can't see what's going on. She's running Windows, maybe Windows 7 there. Uh, and then here is uh, here are some girls in action. So please join me in a round of virtual applause for Karen and the various collaborators on their winning submission in the instruction category. That's the sound of people cheering. Um, and then we have in the same category, an honorable mention award submitted by Professor Olang. Gunju and Professor Shrisa from St. Cloud State University in Minnesota. STOQSRA, a self-learning tool of quantitative security risk assessment. And there's a picture of Amos. The College of Science and Engineering promotes and encourages faculty members to engage students at St. Cloud State University in interdisciplinary research activities. The Department of Computer Science and IT at the university encourages faculty members to seek external grants for engaging students in research. Professor Olangunju received a research grant from the Minnesota Information Technology Center for Excellence to pursue this project. With this award-winning submission, St. Cloud State University will be able to recruit more talented students into its computer engineering, cybersecurity, and software engineering degree programs. Students in the cybersecurity program will be better prepared in quantitative security assessments. Faculty members in software engineering, cybersecurity, and computer science will be able to form partnerships to seek external grants for engaging more students in interdisciplinary research activities. This award will make it easier for Professor Olangunju to recruit talented undergraduate and graduate students into his future research projects. Please join me in a round of virtual applause for this honorable mention winning submission in the instruction category. All right, moving right along in the practice category, the third of our four categories, the winning submission submitted by Stan Mirza from Keene University, Mirzwa, sorry Stan, is titled Situational and Cybersecurity Awareness for Public Health Researchers. Boy, and what auspicious timing of this submission. Um, this effort to focus and bring greater cybersecurity awareness to the global health research sector was made possible by the Keene University Center for Cybersecurity, headed by Dr. James Dryley, Executive Director, School of Criminal Justice and Public Administration, and Dr. Patricia Muriel, Executive Director, School of Computer Science and Technology. The center is created under the direction of pursuing a collaborative methodology, emphasizing a multidisciplinary approach for students and staff to cybersecurity awareness and education. True collaboration helps one to be empowered and consider areas such as global health, global public health that may have unmet needs relative to cybersecurity awareness. And in addition to Stan, we'd also like to recognize others involved in this effort that includes the Venue Foundation, whose team assisted with the initial concept and a research paper section on cybersecurity vulnerability assessments. And last but not least, Samir Sudi from Indiana University, author and contributor, contributor 
assisting with the initial concept and a research paper section on cybersecurity vulnerability assessment. Please join me in a round of virtual applause for Stan and the various others on their winning submission in the practice category. We have in this same category an honorable mention award submitted by Iman El Sheikh at the University of West Florida, and, and it's titled Cybersecurity for All. And you can see the team here. Uh, I, I will note that uh, Dr. Guillermo Francia, Sonny in the bottom left, he was part of the F a very, very strong team at the University of West Florida that's doing some amazing stuff there in the panhandle portion of the state. And Sonny was a 2018 recipient of the Innovations Award in the Faculty Development category for his submission, Industrial Control System Security Curriculum Resource Kit. This submission, the Cybersecurity for All program, is designed to help individuals launch or advance a career in cybersecurity and reskill, upskill, or earn industry certifications for evolving cybersecurity roles. Excuse me, since its launch, over 28 courses have been developed and offered. Uh, to over 720 participants, including state personnel, small businesses, veterans, and the community. The University, the University of West Florida continues to lead efforts and develop innovative programs to address the critical shortage of, critical shortage of qualified cybersecurity pro, um, professionals. Please join me in a round of virtual applause for the University of West Florida team on their honorable mention winning submission in the practice category. And last but not least, in the program development category, the winning submission titled ACM Cyber Two Year 2020 Curriculum Guidelines, submitted by Kara Tang from Portland Community College. The, oops, let me go back here, sorry about that. The full team is a 10 member task force that produced this publication slash set of guidelines. It includes Kara Tang, Cindy Tucker from Bluegrass Community Technical College, Christian Serban from El Paso Community College, Marcus Geisler from Kasumnis River College, Melissa Stang, Lord Fairfax Community College, Nancy Jones Coastline Community College, James Col Colossa from Bluegrass Community and Technical College, Amelia Phillips from Highline College, uh, Lambros Piscopus from Wilbur Wright College, and Pam Schmeltz from Ivy Tech Community College in Columbus, Indiana. And here's a shot of the, the publication itself. It's available on their website at ccecc.acm.org. And the work of the ACM Committee for Computing Education in Community Colleges produced a practical, high quality curriculum guidance for computing programs. The Cyber Two Year 2020 volume for cybersecurity programs offered at two year colleges is the latest in a series of similar publications for other computing disciplines. Recognizing the important role that community colleges play in educating future cybersecurity professionals, the ACM Committee for Computing Education in Community Colleges encourages partnering with industry and four-year programs and using frameworks such as the NICE Cybersecurity Workforce Framework alongside Cyber Two Year 2020 to build and update academic programs that meet current and future workforce needs. And here's a great picture of Kara in the bottom left, Cindy Tucker in the middle, Melissa Stang, and then left to right, Marcus and Christian. I, I think, I feel like that was taken at, uh, in, in Baltimore. It looks like at the convention center, but I, I could be wrong. It's a fabulous photo there. And um, I'd like you to join me in a round of virtual applause for Kara and the task force that produced Cyber Two Year 2020 on their winning submission in the program development category. And we have one last honorable mention awardee in this same category, and that is Cyber Tech Girls Developing Interest in Cybersecurity Education and Career Pathways submitted by Toby West at Coastline College. 
Cyber Tech Girls events focus on hands-on activities that engage attendees with cybersecurity related concepts to build ongoing interest. Female mentors share their stories and help to run the workshop activities to provide youth girls with a fun cybersecurity experience that builds lasting memories. The hands-on events bring together a wide range of females interested in cybersecurity youth girls in middle school and high school, college students, professional mentors working in industry, government and academia. Cyber Tech Girls brings this community together to further develop pathways and continue developing youth interest in cybersecurity. And there's a couple great shots of the, of the young girls here working, doing some hardware stuff. Looks like they're swapping out a card there. And, and, oh, looks like they're doing some investigative work in a mannequin and then of course there's a the mentors from the cyber tech girls leap day in 2020 so please join me in a round of virtual applause for toby and her team on their honorable mention winning submission in the program development category so that is the 2020 innovations program for 2021 we're planning on dedicating the entire education awards recognition program for this one specifically to explore the following question. How can we best contribute to the needs and transformations that might occur for remote instruction in the COVID-19 world? Submissions would answer questions such as, what does it take to be an effective online cybersecurity educator? What were your two toughest problems you had to solve in transitioning to online education? How are you managing to keep students engaged with one another, with the classroom material? What are the institutional challenges needed to effectively support a transition from primarily face-to-face -face instruction to primarily online education? What could have been done to better prepare for these kinds of risk scenarios, what are sometimes referred to as black swan events, and what can be done in the future? Be on the lookout for more information on this in the coming weeks. And last but not least, Bob, before I turn it back over to you, our friends at the National Cyber League, speaking of diverse um, ideas, diverse submissions, diverse uh, diversity in terms of the winning, um, the winning submitters, ages, and, and race and ethnicity. The National Cyber League player ambassadors are pleased to announce that they're accepting applications for their newly formed volunteer player ambassador diversity and inclusion advisory board. Um, and they're looking for folks to join this, right? They're looking for organizations with diversity and inclusion missions to to join the board and make sure that the now 6,000 players that compete in the National Cyber League each fall and spring have every opportunity um, to be successful um, as entry level industry professionals. If you'd like more information, you can go to nationalcyberleague.org. And Bob, that's the official innovations program. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and then I'm gonna stop the recording um, while we pull up the next speaker's presentation, okay? Okay, very good. Well, thanks very much, Casey. Uh, really good 